What if the always angry, scary-looking Wind Hashira, Sanimi Shinazugawa, was sent to the Mujin train instead of Rengoku? How would the second strongest Hashira fare off against the Upper Moon 3, Akaza? Would the outcome of the story have been different? After the rehabilitation training arc, Tanjiro and the others board the Infinity Train to help the Wind Hashira, Sanimi, in his mission to hunt for a demon that was responsible for a large number of civilians going missing. Now, you might wonder why Sanemi was the one to handle the mission instead of Rengoku. The most likely explanation is that the Demon Slayer Core assigned Rengoku to another mission, and Sanemi is the only one that was available. Upon boarding the train, Tanjiro's group met Sanemi. Later, through the night, all the passengers are soundly asleep while under the power of Enmo. Sanemi finds himself in the familiar surroundings of their home. Meanwhile, the four children tasked by Enmo manage to enter their dreams. One girl enters Sanemi's subconscious realm, which might just be full of tornadoes, and locates a spiritual core. But, just as she's about to claim victory, Sanemi instinctively grabs her throat despite being asleep. This man just loves to beat up kids, huh? In the midst of the chaos, Tanjiro awakens and knocks out all the four kids, resulting in the others waking up. Back in the original series, Rengoku had plans and informed the group on what they should do. But what can you expect from Sanemi? Sanemi would act on impulse and would most likely want to handle everything himself. And because of that, Sanemi would go on his own to hunt down Enmu. He literally feels like the Batman of Demon Slayer, but angrier. Now, you might think about the safety of the passengers. Well, don't worry, because the passengers will surely be safe with Tanjiro's plan. So Tanjiro informs the group to split up in order to project the entirety of the train. Meanwhile, Sanemi is up ahead trying to find the root of the problem, which in this case is Enmu's head. Even if he doesn't want to cooperate with Tanjiro's group, Sanemi intervenes to save Tanjiro from some tentacle attacks and asks to assist in locating Enmu's head. Both of them soon find Enmu merged with the train, with his neck being in the front of the train. Just then, Sanemi executes the fifth form, Cold Mountain Wind, revealing Enmu's neck bone. Tanjiro, on the other hand, uses Hinokami Kagua and successfully decapitates Enmo. This results in Enmu's flesh detaching from the train, causing it to derail at high speed. Now, this is the part where you've all been waiting for. Out of nowhere, a blast erupts from behind them. Emerging from the dust cloud is a figure that horrifies Tanjiro, the upper rank 3 Akaza. Now, this is where things get controversial. With Sanemi being stronger than Rengoku, it is only natural that they are able to take down Enmu much faster. This gives Sanemi, Tanjiro, and the squad to be near full strength when Akaza arrives, and maybe even an opportunity to provide some assistance to Sanemi because they weren't heavily injured. With that being said, this is how I think the story would continue. Akaza lunges at Tanjiro, but Sanemi intercepts slashing the demon's arm with sixth form. Blackwind Mountain Mist. The demon recovers quickly, praising Sanemi's speed. Sanemi insults Akaza for targeting Tanjiro because he was going to be the one to kill him. This is when Akaza proposes to him to become a demon. And of course, Sanemi says no. Akaza then activates his blood demon art destructive death, Compass Needle. He warns Sanemi that his refusal will lead to his downfall. The intense battle is so fast that Tanjiro struggles to keep up. Despite Sanemi's successful attacks, Akaza's wounds heal instantly. Akaza launches a series of shockwaves at Sanemi, who defends himself with his third form, Clear Storm Wind Tree. Sanemi manages to get close to Akaza and lands a few hits, but Akaza remains unfazed and continues his assault. Observing the battle, Inosuke, Zenitsu, and Nezuko all realize that they would be outmatched if any of them joined. Akaza continues to try to convince Sanemi, but Sanemi just tells him to flip off. The battle intensifies as Akaza lands a hit on Sanemi's forehead. Sanemi retaliates with first form, Dust Whirlwind Cutter, slicing off Akaza as arms. However, Akaza's wounds heal instantly, and the fight never stops. In the heat of the battle, Akaza lands a direct punch on Sanemi, causing him to stagger. Despite the pain, Sanemi retaliates. Akaza evades the attack and lands a punch on Sanemi's face, causing significant damage to his eye, just like what he did to Rengoku. Still, Tanjiro and Inosuke were recovering from their previous exertions and injuries, and could only watch helplessly as Sanemi struggled against Akaza. Suddenly, Sanemi prepares to launch a decisive attack on Akaza, who is amazed by Sanemi's spirit and resilience. As Sanemi unleashes his attack, Akaza counters with his annihilation type. Both of them hit each other, but Sanemi manages to pin Akaza down as it's about time for sunrise. The rising sun is the last thing Akaza wants, but Sanemi won't let go like they're a married couple fighting for divorce. With both powerhouses similar to the original story of Rengoku trying to hold off Akaza, this is where things take a turn. As mentioned earlier, Tanjiro and the gang didn't suffer as much damage as Enmu as in the original series. So with 
With Akaza and Sanemi being in a standstill, Tanjiro and Nezuko rush to aid Sanemi. Inosuke and Zenitsu charge at Akaza. Tanjiro uses his sun breathing, Zenitsu uses his thunder breathing, Inosuke with his beast breathing, and Nezuko with her blood demon art puts minor dents into Akaza. It is just enough to weaken him, so the injured Sanemi can be on equal footing to hold him off. At this point, it is five people surrounding Akaza. At this point, Akaza is enraged, not being able to move his arms or legs. He lets out a cry with immense demonic pressure, hoping to push the Tanjiro and Yang away, giving him a chance to escape. However, everyone holds on for dear life. With their combined might and power of plot armor, they are barely able to hold on to Akaza until the sun fully rises. Akaza slowly crumbles as he gets hit by the sun. Akaza will probably have his one episode backstory with sad music. However, still with all their valiant effort, Sanemi already took a fatal wound through the chest like Rengoku. Sanemi lays there as he is passing away, apologizing to Tanjiro and Nezuko, wishing that he had the same bond with Genya. Sanemi, with his final words, tells Tanjiro to help him apologize to Genya for being a bad brother. As much as Tanjiro hated the guy, he and the squad mourn his loss and thanks him for his help defeating a upper moon demon. But with Sanemi gone, what changes will happen? Well, Genya would have been heartbroken to see his only remaining sibling die. Rengoku would also be the one to replace him in the Infinity Castle arc. And Muzan is down an upper moon demon. Hiyo and Tanjiro would also be available to help with other fights. This means that the matchups would most likely be like this. Shinobu, Gyo, Tanjiro vs. Toma, Obanai and Mitsuri vs. Nakime, Gyome, Muichiro, Rengoku and Genya vs. Kokushibo, and Kaigaku vs. Zenitsu. Inosuke and Kanao would also arrive to help Gyo, Tanjiro and Shinobu fight against Doma. Another important change that will occur would be Rengoku unlocking his Demon Slayer mark. Unfortunately, we don't know how strong Rengoku is with his Demon Slayer mark, but we can assume that he can pack quite a punch. But Rengoku would have a higher chance of dying in the final battle than Sanemi in the original series. This is mainly due to the manga stating that Sanemi is stronger than Rengoku. However, they still end up defeating Muzan, and the surviving Demon Slayers live happily ever after. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more videos videos like this one. But before you go, take a look at the video on the screen for more Demon Slayer What If videos.